it is hot in here you guys it is hot in here who picks one of the hottest days of the year to film a video in a, like the puffiest top in the world anyway today i have a slightly different video for you guys lots of you that are long-time subscribers will know that this isn't a type of video that i do too much but a few years ago i would say it's over three years ago now i filmed a video called let me get this right five key pieces to start your luxury collection this was back in the day when i was like just getting into luxury fashion and i literally lived and breathed it i couldn't wait until i could make my next purchase or decide what that could be now now I'm definitely a little bit more reserved and very kind of considered with my luxury purchases I would say. I still make a fair few but this year actually I have made I'm gonna say zero luxury purchases so far this year. I got a bag for Christmas and that has been it I believe. I'm waiting for someone to be like screaming at me. No I bought a pair of Chloe sandals. I have bought a pair of Chloe sandals and I, I love them. So that I think is my one designer purchase so far this year. But anyway, my feelings and the way I behave towards designer pieces has definitely changed over the past three, four years. And considering this video continues to get more and more views every day, I thought this would be the perfect time to revisit that video and see if there's anything I still agree with, if there's some things that I maybe don't agree with, and just generally see if younger me had some good opinions, you know? This could be 15 minutes of me roasting my personal taste. I know we've all probably done it, we've all probably watched luxury fashion recommendation videos and thought, I wonder how long that insert item is going to actually be like what people are calling a classic for, like how long are we actually going to wear these things, what is actually worth purchasing and having in your luxury collection if you're just kind of wanting to dip your toe but you don't want to necessarily make mistakes or buy trend-led items. I've made a lot of mistakes so I feel like I'm maybe potentially a little bit qualified on where not to spend your money so I feel like this video is going to be really interesting for me in terms of just like clicking back at my past choices and being like no why did you spend your money on that? And why did you think that was like a starter piece for a luxury collection? However, with these types of videos, I would say you could also watch them with a view of if this person was starting their luxury collection again, what they would go out and buy straight away. I don't know, I might have said this three years ago. I actually don't know, I haven't watched this back. I The only thing I've done is have someone else look at the video and tell me the types of things. And I've picked items that I would kind of throw in as like my five items from like those kinds of categories. We're gonna revisit this, we're gonna see what I said then versus what I would say now. For those of you who are maybe coming to my channel off the back of that video and have come to this video off the back of that video, hello my name is Susie, I basically make fashion videos on this channel. Lots of shopping, lots of home interiors, there's a lot, there's a lot of content. I upload on Mondays and Thursdays and if you wanted to subscribe that would be amazing. But yeah that is pretty much it for this intro, I feel like it's probably one of the longest intros in the world. I think my sit down videos used to be known for this, this is why I vlog a lot now. But let's get into it. I have my laptop here, so we are going to see what baby me had to say hi everyone welcome back to my channel hi everyone welcome back to my channel that's my very like zen i'm trying to make you feel relaxed voice i forget to use it a lot now also i would like to just take a moment for like yes i do look very different to four years ago i think that is normal <laughs> but I know this, that's probably going to come up in the comments. Also wanted to start off by saying that no one needs luxury goods but if you are looking to invest in something, maybe something small or something a little bit larger as one of your first designer pieces then hopefully you will find this video useful. I actually found this video through Chase Amy. Side note, still highly recommend Chase Amy for all things designer purchase related. She is honestly so knowledgeable as well as Claire. I can't remember what Claire's YouTube channel name is because I feel like it might have changed or differed from platform to platform but I will put some of my favourite people for luxury videos in the comments below. Specifically people that are very 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 knowledgeable and that is the majority of what you see on their channels if that makes sense. And leave me like some clothes and shopping emojis in the comments below. Can we take a moment to just like thank me for not doing the emoji thing anymore? I do love an emoji, but I prefer it if you actually leave a comment versus an emoji. And this was like my entry level buy. And of course it is sunglasses. Those of you who watch my videos regularly will know that I am obsessed with sunglasses. I am still obsessed with sunglasses. Nothing has changed. What sunglasses though? But yeah, these are my most recent purchase. These are the Dior reflected sunglasses. They're very similar to the So Real, but I think they're called reflected or something like that. 
so much. Let's see why I suggested. Was I suggesting these specifically or just sunglasses? And I love these because I just feel like gold is such a... It's, it feels like an autumn and winter colour, but it also feels like a summer colour as well. I always think gold and silver transcend seasons really well. And that is something that I would definitely recommend thinking about when you're making your first luxury purchase. For me, sunglasses are just that. I know a lot of people say that you don't wear sunglasses in the winter, but I do. I stand by all of this. Now, I didn't quite get to a point there, did I? Hmm. Oh, Suze. Oh, Suze. Anyway, I do stand by if you are looking to dip your toe into the designer luxury fashion world, sunglasses are probably my number one go-to and I feel like they are a go-to that lots of people do go for along with quite often watches and the occasional bit of jewellery. I feel like growing up that was how everyone I knew dabbled into kind of luxury and designer and things like that. Jewelry I have real bugbears with so I'm not gonna discuss that and I actually don't own, do I? No, I don't own a designer watch. I actually prefer high street watches but who knows I might change my mind on that. I reserve the right to grow and change my mind on this channel. So with that in mind that covers me for some of the um, BS that I may have spouted in this video and believe me no one wants to roast me more than me so if I get the opportunity in this video I'm going to. So like I said I agree on the designer sunglasses. In that particular pair that I have picked was probably a poor choice on my part because I could have picked this pair. These are the Celine Tilda sunglasses. I do think they're way more of a classic. I don't wear these like a ton but I do dig them out every so often and I just love how huge they are on my tiny little head. But I owned these back then and I think they were way more of a classic. I think with this video I kind of picked things that I was really really obsessed with at the time. So the category still stands but the product recommendation I probably would not go for so much now. In terms of talking about metals I do still agree that you can have certain metals on sunglasses that do work really well whatever the season. The Ray-Ban, I know they're not so luxury but the Ray-Ban, what are they called? Like the little round sunglasses that Ev literally everyone everyone owns they work really well winter or summer i live for them i also have a pair from Givenchy that are they're still an aviator style so along a similar vein to the dior style but far more classic in their style they're a bit more classic aviator but just blown out a little bit so they're a little bit bigger than your normal aviator a little bit more square and the i'll try and find a picture or insert a cutaway because I actually don't know where those are right now. Definitely none of the ones around me, sadly. So I was originally going to literally rip into myself for those sunglasses because I actually cannot stand those sunglasses now. However, I do think that trends change, but actually the sentiment behind that was correct. Just not the perfect pair to display that example. I would actually say that an aviator style is much more classic now in addition to kind of like your classic Ray-Bans. They just will never ever go out. You just need to make sure you pick a pair that really 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 suit your face. I do honestly think that lots of the ones that I still wear now that I bought four years ago, the reason I still wear them is that they suit my face. Now I would actually probably lean more towards a black pair of sunglasses as opposed to a gold pair. I still have lots of gold pairs and I love them but the ones that I get wear out of all year round now are 100% like completely black sunglasses. My current updated like black pair that I love are the Dior, again love Dior sunglasses, like I really do like go back to them over and over again. I actually don't know what these are called, it says cat style Dior 1 on the inside, I don't know if that is the name but I will link them if they are still on sale. But yeah, now I would actually say either a very black pair of sunglasses because I think they work well all year round or your kind of classic aviator style. So basically now I would be very wishy-washy on, on the fence and say whatever works for you in terms of metals. If you prefer black sunglasses, go for black. If you prefer like a dainty pair that have like gold on them, then knock yourself out and go for that. Go for whatever you think you are going to wear the most. Look at what you already have and kind of base your purchases on that. When I look at my most worn designer purchases, they are often purchases that I've made off the back of thinking, well, I wear, for example, trainers a lot, white trainers, love white trainers. So I've invested in a luxury pair of white trainers and I never, ever, ever regret them. So that is lesson number one. When you are watching YouTube recommendations, go by what you already wear a ton, not by what kind of someone else says, like whether it's a metal or a color, because ultimately someone could be like, pink is classic and never gonna go out. But if you don't wear pink, you're not gonna wear the item. So that was long, but I both agree and disagree with past me in terms of the designer sunglasses category. But honestly, my most worn for the past, I would say two years solidly, has been the classic pair of round Ray-Bans. I 
swear by them and they're something that maybe i don't wear for a little bit because i'm loving like a trendy piece but i always go back to those so yeah that's something to bear in mind sunglasses are a great one to delve into but also tricky in the sense that the trendy styles can kind of like sway you when purchasing and actually they're not the most classic and not necessarily the ones that you'll maybe get the most wear out of so look at what you already have next item is small leather good i think that these are a really nice way to ease yourself into the luxury market they're not too expensive they can be kind of expensive depending on the brand that you go for so if you go for like louis vuitton or chanel they are definitely more expensive but there are brands like mcqueen and stuff like that and those ones are a little bit less bank breaking so there's definitely a range and this ysl one that i have is a nice like mid-range kind of one this was actually a gift that i got for my birthday this one i wholeheartedly stand by because it is here i have used this every single day i think i got this october 2016. i'm 90 confident on that that it was literally my birthday and i think that's probably about a month before this video went up and i have used it every single day for the past almost four years and it's still going strong the reason it looks like i don't use it is because i've got my cards on the back because i don't want them on camera but i swear by this and let me show you the amount of wear like the tiny minimal amount of wear it is honestly barely anything i am so impressed with how this has held up i would say if you are looking to delve into the luxury market but not spend you know over 500 pounds i don't believe these are over 500 pounds i think they're maybe around the 300 400 mark obviously price increases i don't know what they are off the top of my head but i would actually say these are one of the best ways to kind of delve into the luxury market without wanting to be too like say you don't want a pair of flashy trainers or you don't want like designer sunglasses with like a logo on them but you do want something that just feels a little bit special one of these is gorge and i honestly i love mine oh i actually do have a little tiny bit of like wear on the corner there it is doing so well it's held up so well i always say that one day i'll get like a chanel card holder or a louis vuitton one but actually this one keeps holding up it will not fall apart so i'm probably gonna have this for five plus years before this starts looking worn like if that's the wear that i've got after nearly four years it's gonna hold up. So I would say if you want something that is going to be actually useful, bearing in mind I literally pay for something on card every single day, I don't take a purse, this is all I take, and it holds all of my loyalty cards, everything like that, I would say this is like my number one recommendation out of everything in this video because it is the same, the exact same item. So yeah, good recommendation on my part. Well done, past self. My next recommendation would be a belt and for me I wear these kind of regularly but not every day so they're not my go-to. I'm just gonna stop myself there because I don't need to I don't need to go any further and I don't particularly want to hear anymore because that belt was one of the stupidest purchases that I made. I don't want to shoot myself in the foot because I might find a real like trend belt that I just absolutely love and make the jump go for the purchase so I don't want to kind of say never I never stay never but I would say that looking back on the belts that I've owned that were luxury purchases and they had big logos on them I have a YSL one and then I have my Gucci one I do not wear them I don't like how grounded it is and you know me if you have been subscribed to this channel a while you will know I love brands i love things where something is like plastered on something there's something about it which i just can't say no to you can all make up your own opinions about that i don't care but on belts i don't i don't rate it i love it on my shoes <laughs> on my bags but actually on a belt i don't love it the only exception i think i would currently make is if it was like a chanel where it's like one of the chain ones and it's got the dangly like cc coming off of it because i just love a dangly cc god yeah but that belt was a stupid purchase and it was such a trend now i would be much more inclined to go for a kind of slightly more expensive well-made belt but that isn't like designer basically you just want it to feel nice to be robust to not like fall apart after like a couple of wears and for it to be timeless in your wardrobe and i don't really want my belt to be screaming out However, that being said, there aren't really a lot of trends at the moment for belts that are really like screaming at you. We have the corset belts kind of like last summer and I'm not really sure if they're like coming back. It's hard to tell with fashion this year because uh, no one's been wearing clothes that aren't loungewear. Maybe for some it's a perfect purchase, but for me, I'm just not really into it at the moment. And I do think that designer belts were a huge 
huge trend. For me, I don't have a little black dress right here, but I do have a brand that I want to talk about for evening and occasion wear, and that is Self Portrait. They are definitely more on the entry level side of things. I actually own quite a few dresses from this brand, and for me, it's because the quality of them and the fit is just so, so wonderful. And for the price, I don't feel like they're too expensive as well. This one is actually one that I purchased recently, and it is just the most beautiful kind of grey lilac dress. I don't like that dress. I actually, I think that one might have been sold on Depop. I ended up really not liking that dress. It is cute, but on me, the fit just wasn't the most flattering. I'm also wondering where the cutaways are in this video. Like, what was I doing? This is not useful. Oh, okay, we have another recommendation. I wanted to talk about self-portrait jumpsuits if you are not um, a dressy kind of girl and I feel like these are sometimes a little bit more worthwhile investing in because this one I feel like I can kind of wear to those in betweeny events. I still own that jumpsuit. I still love that jumpsuit. Honestly, it is so great. It has been with me for so long now. I've actually in between this video and present day gone up and down a dress size and that jumpsuit has still fit to me. It is magical. Self-portrait dresses just seem to have the perfect amount of like stretch to them i guess we're gonna say i love self-portrait whenever i have like an event they are a go-to brand that i will look at because of the current world situation all of my event dresses i've moved house by the way i don't know if you can i've moved house like once twice like three times in between now and this video but because i have just recently moved all of my events wardrobe is just like in storage because i know i'm not going to anything this year maybe around christmas we'll see maybe but because of that i don't have the dresses to show you but i still own that jumpsuit i actually have a white self-portrait dress which is beautiful and i love for just more like summery events that aren't obviously weddings the black jumpsuit i tend to wear more for christmas parties things like that and then i also have and i don't know if i show you these dresses do i show you them no, I actually own the azalea dresses, which I think they still make in various different colors. I own the burgundy and the pink. And I actually already, I'm surprised I didn't show the pink one because I own the pink one at the time of filming this. But I actually wore that to Victoria from In The Rose Wedding. I'll pop a little picture here. I love those dresses so much. I have the burgundy for like more wintry wedding type scenarios and just always seem to fit very well. So they're just like permanently in my wardrobe as like go-tos for if I have a wedding or like christening, that kind of thing. And they're just like the perfect dresses. And I think having a white dress, a black jumpsuit, a pink dress and then the burgundy in the same the pink and the burgundy are the same style i basically have like a little mini events wardrobe there that just kind of works for everything so i 100 percent stand by that recommendation for evening wear they're not hideously expensive they are still very expensive dresses but they are beautiful the quality is just incredible i fully stand by my recommendation of those just maybe not the gray dress that i showed in this video i think i basically showed everything that i was loving from the brands at the time but obviously didn't have like i've got god like five six years experience in buying luxury goods now to look back on and be like this is what i've worn the most i have owned this for x amount of years and got this much wear and x amount of years i've got this much wear of this but i would say in terms of a brand and that especially the black jumpsuit i was very much on the money with that recommendation if you're looking to like dip in but you don't want something that's like heavily branded and you want something a bit special but not necessarily that's for everyday wear if you're the kind of person that likes things for best evening wear is a gorgeous option i would also say if you're that way inclined a lovely pair of luxury shoes that could also go well if you lump it in that same category but for me it's not something i have a huge amount of experience in oh i'm seeing shoes what have i recommended there are a lot of people that are either a bag person or a shoe person i personally i'm a bag person but um i went with boots on this occasion because i feel like boots are those one thing that you buy every single winter and by the next winter they are completely worn down and you end up buying a new pair all of the time. I also feel like with shoes, they go on the ground. You generally don't put your bags on the ground or your other luxury pieces on the ground, but you put your shoes on the ground. And the ones that I would recommend uh, are the Acne Jensen boots, which are these ones here. Okay. I'm taking this with a pinch of salt because back in the day when I filmed this, I was very much a boots wearer. I can't remember the last time I threw on a pair of boots right now. I don't really wear them during the summer. The closest I would get is kind of springtime with a dress I'd throw on my Chloe Susanna boots, which I still have and I think I owned maybe around this time. In the winter, I do like to crack out a pair of boots, but I do tend to follow trends with my boots. I love a pair of over the knee boots, a pair of knee high boots, but they kind of ebb and flow with trends. What I will say is I still love, love, even though they're not super trendy, I love a sock boot, but I wouldn't spend a ton of money on them because 
I would just wear them down and because they're a pointy heel you're more likely to kind of scuff them on things so I have a love for boots but not the same love I did back then and back in the day I wore those Acne Jensen boots over and over and over I still own those boots so they're not necessarily something that I'm kind of like oh no I can't stand that but I don't definitely don't wear them anymore and I don't think I've worn them for maybe two years now i want to say i much prefer a heel i am much shorter and back in the day i wasn't so confident in wearing heels as much i still liked wearing a heel boot but now i would wear like a thin stiletto for like meetings in the day high high heels for meetings in the day i feel so confident in them love them especially for my height back then i was not on that so much and that is a very personal like to me back then choice of boot that being said i still think that those boots would be great for a number of people because i know a lot of people don't love heels and they're a pointed toe so they are still very elongating but for me personally i just wouldn't recommend designer boots in general anymore in terms of designer shoes though i would still recommend them just i think i was a bit too like personal in my recommendation look at what you get the most wear out of so for me a couple of years ago i was like do you know what i'm wearing a lot of white trainers and i'm really loving wearing white trainers and i have been for like a good few years now i think i got into wearing them around like 2017 and i decided to purchase the gucci i can't remember what they're actually called i got a pair of gucci trainers i will pop a picture of them on screen because i don't actually know where mine are right now i'm hoping they're at my boyfriend's house because otherwise i'm going to start panicking and i'm trying not to think about it too much because they're my favorite shoe but anyway i decided to purchase those i looked at what i was wearing the most and it was white trainers and i have worn them so much i've had them for I would say two years now. I also have really enjoyed purchasing designer sandals. These are a pair that I purchased two years ago, again. I got these in 2018. These are the YSL, I wanna say Tribute Sandals. They've got that signature like Tribute kind of casing around the top of the foot. I love these. These, if you buy a brand new pair, are gonna look slightly different because these are so loved, so worn, so disgusting. Yeah, that's just not. These have come everywhere with me over the past two years. I live for them. They work beautifully with jeans and they are so lovely to look at on your feet. Like they really make your feet look nice. And I just love them. I'm actually surprised I don't own these in black yet, to be honest, but I just knew straight up that I would get more wear out of the tan and I live for these. These are the tan bag and like a white dress or kind of like a white outfit fit in the summer or even black dress just anything basically in the summer look so good i literally love them so much they are so disgusting and so worn i think they still look great now that they're worn because of the tan color it kind of just makes them look like a bit of an aged tan as opposed to like these were like shiny and pretty but basically what i'm trying to say is that they've worn really really well like the aging suits them whereas i think if i had a black pair they wouldn't have worn so well you know that i wear them a lot though because the saint laurent has literally like it's meant to be there and it has like almost completely rubbed no it has come oh no we've got a bit of a tea but it's basically rubbed off these have been everywhere with me over the past couple of summers i live for them they're the number one pair of sandals that i like reach for every summer without fail but yeah obviously sandals are a pair of shoes that you wouldn't wear all year round so i do understand why i didn't suggest them for this video but yeah i do still stand by the fact that shoes are definitely a tricky one you, like i said in the video you put them on the ground and we definitely have more trends in terms of footwear so i think it's a much harder area to kind of dip your toe into very confidently moving on there aren't really any entry level bags that i own the one that i did buy as my first designer bag actually i wouldn't recommend it was an aspinall bag and it just wasn't the best quality and i just don't feel like the style is right but i definitely do think that there are some bags that i have borrowed off of friends and just used randomly for like a day or an afternoon i think that there are definitely some great ones out there so you have like the ysl blogger bag which is a really great um little bag and the Gucci disco bag I think it is I'll pop little photos of them here and then there's also like the Philip Lim Pashley bag I think it's called and that is a really nice big one and that's something I've been looking at buying for a really long time because it can fit a laptop in and it's just a great size and um, it's quite durable and it's really hard to scratch because it has more of a grained material okay I wasn't so confident in talking about bags back then but I have made many bag purchases since this video was made I think I owned maybe three max three maybe four designer bags at the point of this video being made i now own so many more i will link a bag collection video if you haven't 
watch that but it's funny the bags that i talked about in that video because i recommended a lot of essentially like camera bags which are basically just like little kind of like zip up bags and i'd actually sat down to film this video and i knew that there wasn't like a solid bag recommendation in this one and i picked out a couple that i wanted to kind of talk about as like bags that i think are great depending on your needs and if you wanted to dip your toe into the luxury goods kind of market these would be some good options and funnily enough I actually do now own a camera bag. I picked this up two years ago. I think, yeah, two years ago, 2018 I got this and I love it. I love it. I think, I don't know if there's been a price increase since, but it cost me at the time 900 pounds, absolute max. And I just loved it because I knew that I got on really well with black and brown tones and this was like perfect. I love a monogram because I'm such a monogram human and i love the size of this one i love that it was fendi which was a brand that i do kind of like love the designs from don't love them so much as like a, a brand but i like a lot of their designs and their logo monogramming is like really really cute and i came across this on this portal and i was like that is like perfect for me and i have worn it almost daily since i got it i have used it so much especially lockdown literally the only bag that i was using for such a long time because all i really needed were like my keys and occasionally my card holder when i was actually going to like the supermarket but what i really needed were keys and phone when i was going for my one hour of exercise a day and this bag was perfect outside of lockdown i wore it so much i'm pretty sure if i link my bag collection video i will be spouting the same stuff so if you want to go and watch that then i would recommend you go and watch it because it's got the full shebang of everything i own bar one bag which i am going to touch on that kind of bag in a second but yeah i would highly recommend this type of bag as like an introductory bag because it is under the 1000 pound mark it's such a sickening amount of money really isn't it this is one of the reasons why i don't love making luxury videos so much anymore because i literally like die at myself being like it's under the 1000 pound mark i'm like hmm. but if you clicked on this video chances are you are aware of hideous pricing this bag has been so durable so like it, it has lasted so well honestly i could not be happier and this is one of my like top three bags that i would recommend and i don't know why i guess because it's not so worn like the gucci disco bag was very that was a very trendy bag but everyone still has it now and i know so many people that still wear it now they still love it now it's a great bag and it's so timeless because even though it has the logoing on the front it was like sewn in so it's just very discreet you have the ysl what was the blogger bag and they i think do it now but in a slightly different design i believe that bag was very very cute it was a little bit smaller i would say the gucci one was great because it was actually like this width but taller so you could fit a bit more in it the ysl blogger bag was a bit smaller you could literally just about shove like you wouldn't fit an iphone where is my iphone an iphone 11 pro max probably wouldn't be fitting in that now i don't even want to test that but I remember them being very small but this one is like the perfect size not too big not too little i can fit phone vlogging camera keys card holder lipstick like so much stuff in here i highly recommend and because it is like a neutral color combination it goes with everything it just goes with absolutely everything i love it obviously i'm a neutral lover if you are not a neutral lover hopefully there will be some recommendations of people that i listed in the info box who will be very up your street because i think both amy and claire who i already mentioned at the beginning of video they love themselves a colorful bag now in terms of a slightly larger bag i didn't own this at the time of filming but i owned this exact same bag in the exact same size but in a grainy leather in a like lilac-y pebbly gray color i've given that to my mum, and she wears it on very 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 special occasions <laughs> but for me it is an everyday everything in the kitchen sink kind of bag this fits a mini apple macbook so the macbooks which are the i want to say they're like an 11 inch screen they're very thin and very small it is literally just called the macbook like i said bag collection video in the info box i've sh literally shown you that it will fit i have owned this since i believe 2017 i live for it i still love it so much and i think that this is an amazing first purchase if you're looking for something that is a little bit more sizable you've got the money to spend and you're looking for or something that is gonna do you for every day for work you do carry like a small macbook or an ipad or even just have like you want to take a makeup bag and just like an umbrella in your bag and stuff like that for work like this does fit a lot versus the camera bag obviously it does not fit a lot so you can get like notebook pens and all of that in here like i said they do it in a grainy leather this is the shiny i just call it the shiny leather 
I don't know if it's like called gloss or anything like that. I'm not 100%. But I have loved this now and use this so regularly. There'll be months where I use it just every single day as my go-to for the past three three years. I'm listing quite a lot of things as my fifth option really here, aren't I? But if we're talking about bags as like your option for dipping your toe into, because technically belts were off the card, so I'm just gonna go ham on the bag section. I would say this is an amazing option to go for. And yeah, depending on your style, for me, I love a bit of sports luxe. The camera bag kind of works very well with that. Like day to day, if I'm not kind of dressed up for work and stuff like that, or dressed up I want to be dressed up I would generally wear something a bit more casual jeans trainers that kind of thing and these bags work very well to being casual but also very smart this one especially works very very well if I'm wearing like a blazer and maybe like a pair of kind of like cigarette trousers you know some boots or something like that this works really really beautifully and I do get so much wear out of it winter spring summer autumn so worth the money so so worth the money so that being said if your lifestyle is that you need to be carrying around so much stuff and you need a bigger bag than that i would go for a tote bag i love myself a designer tote bag it is something that i've kind of resigned myself to the fact that i either work very well at like camera style bag like very little bags but that have like an easy crossbody or I get a lot of use out of like a very very big bag there's a little like in the middle size between this and this that i've now just stopped myself from buying because it it's not right there's not like enough places for me to wear it if that makes sense but over the past year i have been loving myself a tote bag i use this one so much in the summer this is the saint laurent reeve gauche and then i also have the Dior book tote but there are so many different styles of tote bags and there are some like mine are very heavily branded which I don't know right now if that's going to stand the test of time I actually think if we hit a recession will we see branding like being taken off of stuff I'm really interested to see how the trends kind of change over the next couple of years but I love tote bags and I just think that they're a really great size and I like the boxiness of these if we take away the branding I love the size of these I love having one of these over my arm and it's just massive i love that but like i said with the five luxury purchases video lots of the items i hadn't had for long enough to kind of be picking the things that were completely timeless that i think would be great first options so those aren't a recommendation of brand or like exact makes but the sizing of them i love or if you are one of those people that wants to carry around a lot of stuff i am now becoming one of those people and i think going forward in my life i don't see myself you know loving the tiny i will either be like tiny tiny bag for like just popping out or giant bag and i think that that middle kind of tier of bag is already for me becoming a very obsolete choice but definitely first purchases this or this unless you want a tote bag and something that's a bit more durable like the saint laurent reeve gauche this comes in black as well and it's canvas so it's just so so durable so yeah those are kind of like three to kind of think about i would say the saint laurent is great in terms of that material is so so durable whereas my dual book tote is like a bit more like materially and i think this would get bashed up more easily because it's more of a soft material whereas the canvas is like a bit tougher and more durable so that is it for bags to recap my top five now versus my top five back in the day would be number one card holders 100 percent get so much wear out of mine use it every single day and it's not too flashy so if you're in a situation where you just don't want to have like a logo or something glaringly obvious i do think it's a great option to have it's something a little bit special but that isn't like super super obvious my second would still be sunglasses because i think they are such an affordable way to dip your toe into the luxury market not all sunglasses but most will be more affordable than a card holder that being said there are some very very bougie sunglasses out there sometimes i scroll through net porter and i see a pair of cartier sunglasses and i'm like are this 600 pounds like is that made of gold like what is that so yeah items i would not buy would you like to see that video let me know but sunglasses are one of my favorite favorite designer accessories and like i said i wear them every single day whether it's winter or summer i love sunglasses one of the things that i'm loving with more trend-led sunglasses is buying vintage so there are a pair of very 90s star sunglasses doing the rounds at the moment they're very pale lenses no frame nothing like that i currently hopefully fingers crossed 
have a pair coming my way from Vestier. They're currently being authenticated, so hopefully they're real. I love the Vestier process for that. It's just so great. That's where I got my dual tote bag. And it is just like you purchase and then you're like waiting for them to be like, yeah, we think this is real. And then they send it to you. And I was just like, oh. So yeah, I really do love Vestier. And I do think in terms of like dipping your toe into like the luxury market for the first time, if you're unsure. And if you're the kind of person that's like, I don't want to buy something brand new that I'm just going to like bash up because I have this curse on me. I swear. I swear I have a curse on me with the majority of bags which is why I'm so funny about like materials and stuff now weirdly this bag has never had like a tragedy happen but the majority of bags I buy have something awful happen to them in the first week that did not happen with the due auto and I'm like is it because it was someone else's first who knows but yeah anyway tangent i do think that it's a great option for things that are like trends so for example dior saddlebags i know some people when they first like launched they didn't go and buy the brand new dior saddlebag from dior they went on to vestia and got the vintage saddlebags and it just for a lot of people felt much more special because they got something that was like the original when it was out the first time around. So yeah, just throwing that out there for certain like trend items, I would definitely consider buying pre-loved if it's something that has already done the rounds once before. So card holder, sunglasses, shoes, if you are a shoe person, if you are a bag person, bags would go in third place. But this is obviously like stepping stones of bouginess basically. So shoes, third place, they are a little bit more affordable than designer bags. And I think that is the reason why I would go for them in third place. In fourth place, I would go for a small kind of camera style bag, just a really easy wearable item in your wardrobe, something that you're gonna literally wear day in, day out, like a ride or die bag. I love these so much. And in fifth place, a larger bag, whether that is something more in kind of this size or a tote bag, totally like up to your own personal preference. Obviously, I'm putting these in fifth place. They do tend to be a bit more expensive, because you're paying for more material, especially if you are going for a leather or you're going for a Chanel Dior. So, so expensive. But I don't know how much I would recommend like Chanel or Dior as like first purchases because they are expensive and that's a very ballsy recommendation and not one I'm confident enough to make. I can't imagine for my first bag purchase having gone for a Chanel. That being said, would I have bought some other bags? I feel like I stepping stoned my way to a Chanel, but there is something to be said for buying one dream designer bag, saving up for it, because obviously we do not spend money that we don't have on designer bags. If you are gonna save up and go whole hog, I fully respect that. If you wanna stepping stone your way and kind of like get one bag, sell it, use the money to like save up and then buy another bag, also do you, if you wanna start a whole collection, these are great places to start. So yeah, you're obviously gonna pay more but for the brand, for the material. So for example, I actually think this bag is bigger. It cost me, I believe, if my memory serves me right, less than this one, because obviously different materials and different brands as well. So the YSL Reeve Gros retails for currently 880 pounds. I think there has been a price increase because I don't remember paying 800 pounds for mine but i don't see as much coming out from a brand like Givenchy for less than the 1000 pound mark so that is going to be it for me i think today i feel like i have filmed for an eternity please do let me know if you enjoyed this video and your thoughts on my previous video versus now i'd love to know if you enjoyed this and just if you had watched both in the first place like what you thought and if you would like more luxury related videos do let me know i love doing my best and worst i actually did one of those i think in like march time so i will link that if you are interested in it if you've enjoyed this video i hope you're all having the best day i'm so sorry that my hungry brain was like on in full force in this video and i will see you guys again very very soon love you bye